come once again in our Sunday service. I believe that uh, we came expectant and we know that uh, in our sitting down and uh, going through the word of God, the Lord will edify us, the Lord will build us, the Lord will continue to enlighten us uh, through the power of his word. And tumekua uh, tukiangalia mambo ya wisdom in building godly relationships and tumeangalia uh, mambo kadha so far we have covered a lot and i think i only have uh, this series and next sunday series then i we begin something new uh, so that sote tuweze kuwa tunaendelea tuna develop as god desires of each one of us and we have been talking about the issue of uh, how to resolve conflicts and also how to uh, restore broken relationships. How we can uh, restore broken relationships. And uh, I gave you several scriptures last Sunday and we explained what is a conflict and why does God desire that even after the conflict we seek for reconciliation. And we said that uh, uh, God does not want us to end any relationship in a way that we cannot connect again. Don't end any relationship in a bad way. And uh, we talk the issue of uh, confronting uh, issues that uh, can bring conflict in our lives. And we saw that in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 23 to 24, we said that it takes humility to admit and restore a broken relationship. It takes humility. It's only a humble man who can be able to admit and humbly accept the wrong they have done and restore a broken relationships. And uh, that is the will of God. We said that the reason for our connecting together is not to end the relationship and become enemies. Actually, you should not have anyone as your enemy. People can claim they are your enemies, but uh, they are your enemy, but you should not claim that anyone is your enemy or you have enmity with anyone. So we, we say the issue of confronting issues is very important, and I gave you uh, two uh, Bible verses, and I don't want to go to that. Uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 15, uh, we say that the reason why we confront is to gain one another. The reason why we admit uh, is so that we can gain our brother. And in that we saw the issue of restoration in uh, relationships. And uh, God does not want us to be careless on how we handle one another. And that is very important. Then we proceed on by saying that uh, how we part determined our continuity in our ministry. How we part ways. Because relationships has a way of affecting you. Your progress uh, in all dimensions of life. Whether it is marital, whether, whether it is uh, in the marketplace, whether it is in the church, Relationships has a way of antagonizing you, as in a slow down your life, where you are unable to have the right focus or kuwa na single eye and eye ya pursue life and uh, do the things that you ought to do in life uh, with a pure heart. And we said that the continuity of our ministry of our functionality even in the kingdom of God is more determined by the conflict uh, that comes and how we resolve them. And uh, the wisdom of God is for us to address issues and uh, uh, in the process of the way we will be healed. For instance, if a person has in any way trespassed or offended you, you must forgive them. That's number one. But you know, inner healing is a journey. Inner healing is a journey. So mtu waneza kakufanyia kitu, you forgive them. But you begin a journey of healing, okay, emotionally, 
kwa sababu ya what that person may be the harm maybe for instance is uh, your reputation which has been ruined or there is malice there is slander there is there are many things that are uh, are being said against you by this person so the first thing is you confront them you tell them what they are saying or what they are doing is not right then with that forgive them then unanswer the process of inner healing of inner healing and in that process of inner healing that's where we need to take care of our emotions that's where we need to take care of uh, our words that's where we need to take care of uh, and that relationship sometimes always karejea as it was mbaka inner healing it take place you know the reason why some of us are not relating with the people the way they are supposed to even though you forgive you have forgiven them is because of inner healing when a person is healed inwardly then you are able to relate and anyone who is not healed inwardly though they have forgiven they cannot be able to relate in love so that seeks to affect you in one way and i gave you several people and i don't think i'm going to go through them because that will take us to a, a, a study of each one of them i say the contention between abraham then he was abraham and lot affected lot and his generation there was a contention you see that in the book of uh, genesis chapter 13 and uh, abraham was the one who was called by god but uh, in the course of time kulikuwa na conflict ambayo ilitokea because the lord had blessed them and the, 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 the Bible said the land could not contain uh, uh, the blessings they had. So there was strife and contention because of the blessing. Amen. There was strife and contention because of that blessing which uh, the Lord blessed them with. But you know, one thing about this conflict, it exposed the wicked and the weakness, uh, the wicked heart and the weakness in in a uh, lot lord was weak the conflict uncovered the life of lot abraham was the covering of lot abraham was the covering of lot but lot never knew that the bible say genesis chapter 13 verse 8 that so abraham now we can begin from verse 5 lot also were who went with abraham had flocks and herds and tents now the land was not able to support them that they might dwell together it was a good conflict because the blessing are increasing the bible says for the possessions were so great that they could not dwell together and there was strife that is conflict between the herdsmen of abram abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lord's livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelt in the land. So Abraham, as the father, approached Lot because Abraham was like the covering of Lot. He was like a spiritual father. The Bible says, So Abraham said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me, and between your herdsmen and your herdsmen. For we are, I want you to see that, for we are brethren. If not the whole land before, is, is, is not the whole land before you, please separate from me. If you take to the left, I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. And Lord lifted his eye and so all the plain of jordan that it was well watered amen so uh, you you just see abraham gave him the first priority yakwamba since there is strife uh, at where's the end hivo because abraham knew the principle of uh, psalms 133 that where there is strife god cannot command a blessing where there is strife he knew what the Bible says in the book of uh, Genesis chapter, uh, uh, James chapter 3, verse, uh, verse, I think verse 16, and uh, verse 16, 
where it says uh, that where there is strife, for where envy and, and self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil being are there. So he knew the only way the devil can attack them is by bringing strife. So Abraham said to this man, and Lot never knew that he was uncovering himself. There are several things you can learn about Lot. When there is a strife in between you and a person in authority, how should you handle it? Because this is a strife that was in between Abraham and Lot. Lot was the junior and Abraham was the senior. Abraham gave Lot a chance. Wewe chagua mahali utaenda. Na ukienda, mimi nitaenda na upande ile ingine. There are two kind of lifting of, uh, of uh, ice. There are two kind of lifting of ice. The one, the first one is of Lord that is done through the canal way, in a canal way. It is, uh, we see, Lord here we can categorize him as an opportunist. As an opportunist. Maana ukisoma history utajua where he's coming from. The Bible says, and Lord, Abraham gave him the chance. Akamambia, the whole land is before us. Now choose where you will go. I will not choose first, but you choose first. So he gave him the priority to choose. And when Lord chose where to go, the Bible says uh, he was not led and directed uh, by God. It was not through revelation. It was not, through, it was not inspired by God. It was not inspired by the Spirit. He, he walked in a carnal way. Yeye aliona Sodom na kaona mahali ngurue zake, kondo zake, zitakula. And he made a decision to go. And he made a decision to go. Let us see verse 14. After Lord had departed, listen to what God told Abraham. And the Lord said to Abraham, after Lord had separated, lift your eyes now. So there are two kind of lifting of eyes. The one done by Lord in a final through, it is not direct, it is not the Holy Spirit inspiring the man. Ni kutafuta mahali ambapo anaweza weka biashara yake, anaweza weka jamii yake, without the leading, the involvement of God. Without the leading and the involvement of God. The Bible says that Lord lifted up his eyes and so. But after then, God told Abraham that lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are. So Abraham lifting of eyes was inspired by God. The conflict in between Abraham and Lot, ilisababisha Lot macho yake isione vile inavyo paswa. Maana Lot alikuwa natafuta what you call survival, how he can continue. But Abraham knew that a man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So when God told Abraham, lift up your eyes, lift up your eyes and see the whole land, the north, Akambia Kwamba, that uh, look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward, for all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendant forever. And I will make your descendant as the dust. Lord lifted up the eyes. He made a, a, a step without the word of God. But Abraham was taught by God given divine instruction on how to lift the, uh, the eyes. The whole land that you see, I have given you. The whole land. That includes Mahali Lot Alikua because it was eastward, northward, southward, okay, and westward. It includes Mano Kiambio east, west, Sina include Mahali Ataya Menda. Na Kamuambia Kwamba, and I will make your descendant as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendant also could be. Number. Arise, walk in the land through its land and its wind, for I have given it to you. There are two kinds of lifting of hands, our eyes. Verse 18 says, Then Abraham moved his tent. These are two kinds of transition. One in a kupeleka chini, na ingine in a kupeleka ju. 
Lord moved his tent. Lord lifted up his eyes. Abraham lifted up his eyes. Abraham moved his tent. But on which side was God? Who was inspired and directed and uh, instructed by God? It is Abraham. And we see there that the covering of the Lord was with Abraham. So the conflict sometimes uh, uncovers us. When we don't deal now the wisdom of God, it uncovers us. And you know, when a person is uncovered, they will not know immediately. They will not know immediately. They will not know immediately. It may take time, like for Lot. Wakapata watoto walikuwa na wao, wakaendelea for many years, wakakaa kule Sodom, akaenda hivo, until God came to judge the, 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 the land of Sodom, and then from there, maisha ya Lot ikaribika. So this man was affected. The second person is Jacob and Esau. There was a conflict. What bothered the conflict of Jacob and Esau? Is because Esau was a wicked and an evil man. That's what the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 16 tells us. That we should not be profane like Esau. We should not be a man who are governed by our, our sinful desire. And uh, we sacrifice or we exchange our birthright. So the conflict was more ilikuwa based on the moral character, moral za this man called uh, Esau and a Jacob. One man was godly, another one was wicked. So that bad a conflict in between them. And because of that conflict, uh, it affected and brought the curse upon a whole generation, upon a whole generation. So the conflict we have, the Bible says, comes from among us. And they come because of the inner conflict within uh, the individual. The book of James chapter 1, chapter 4 verse 1, in the amplified version. I think this is the amplified version. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? What leads to strife, discord? What is causing the quarrels? And the fights among you. Don't they come from the evil desires? I want you to see that. At war within you. At war within you. You want what you don't have. So you scheme and kill to get. You are jealous of what others have. But you can't get it. So you fight. And wage war to take it away from them. Uh -huh. People can fight you with this one purpose to take away what you have from you. So in conflict, make sure you are not losing what you have. Because conflict is meant to take away what you have. That's what he tells us. So you fight and wage war and take it away from them, okay, to take it away from them, yet you do not have what you want because you don't ask for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. The next one is you adulterers. So, and I, and I change the story. Yakwamba, when a person is not taking care of the inner conflict, zina escalate. The Mesa translation was saying that there, uh, there is a whole army of evil desire within us that contributes to conflict among us. Kukona those desire that are within us. Ambazo zinaza conflict. And those desires, as we see them there, we need to take care of them. Mana sometimes conflict in katokea in relationships because or the inner conflict or the desire that they are within us. So we should ask ourselves, what is causing quarrels and fight among us as we relate? Ninini yo inalete vita. Ninini yo inatuma kukua na ile, we quarrel one another. And uh, James, and I highlight two things. Number one, and I 
highlight mambo ya personal ambition kuwa ambitious number 2 and highlight the issue of jealous and i said jealous is preferring yourself to be better when you are jealous of somebody when you are jealous of somebody because they have any maybe advantage ama wako na blessing or whatever it means uh, wewe una prefer afadhali wewe ungekuwa na hiyo kitu badala ya wao so anasema the issue of competition the issue ambayo inaleta enmity na quarrels and among our life and ourselves ni kwa sababu hiyo mambo na lazima as you are trying to rectify and to resolve conflict lazima uangalie hiyo conflict imezaliwa na nini where is your friend coming from what is the cause of that conflict is it based on jealous is it based on hatred is it just based on pride or is it a genuine conflict is it a genuine conflict because if you don't get things right you will never resolve conflict for instance the conflict in between a lot and uh, abraham ingekuwa solved the conflict in between Jacob and Esau ingekuwa solved when Esau knows that I have backslidden. The conflict in between Jacob, Joseph and his brothers ingekuwa solved not by ja Joseph asking for forgiveness. No. When they understand this is a favored man. So when you are favored, hiyo inaweza ikaleta conflict. When you are blessed, that can bring conflict. So lazima ujue, what is the cause of this conflict? Am I on the wrong? Or is it that I am favored? I am blessed. There is some progress in my life. So in one way or another, even though I seek for peace, I seek for reconciliation, it akua just for a moment, lakini ikitu itaanza tena. The genesis of the conflict must be identified. The genesis. Is this person threatened by my progress? That's why I want to let a conflict. Then I should know then how to deal with them. How to be at peace with them. Not to compromise because to them, any conflict is a kuisha. Lazima sava ifunguliwe. Amen. So what is the genesis of the conflict? Now I'm giving you wisdom. What is the what ni nini mezai conflict? Kama ni Esau anataka Jacob amrudishie uzao wake but God has already said this man I hate him. I hate him. Establish the cause to know how to deal and to act. If the conflict is bad by zile evil motives, how do you deal with it? When there is conflict among men and God that Conflict affects how they relate with other people. And I wanted to do a case study of several people. But write these four things. Ambazo, I want to pick one of it. Let not the conflict you are in cause you to nurture these four things. Number one, to nurture hatred. Out of conflict, we can nurture hatred. Number two, to nurture jealous. Number three, malice. Number four, anger. When conflict is not resolved, we can nurture hatred, jealous, malice, anger. When conflict are not resolved, it is possible also to try to control the emotions of other people. How do we control the emotions of other people? It is through anger. It is through malice. It is through hatred. It is through jealous. Okay? Because we are in conflict with you, you create an environment that makes it hard for me. You try to affect me emotionally. This is all about conflict. manipulation. When conflict are not resolved, it is possible we try to control the emotions and the well-being of other people. Kama wewe umeoa ama umeorewa na kuna conflict kwa ndoa, kama ni shai unawekewa namna hiyo na mtu anaenda kama anafanya namna hii eh. <laughs> Ana kuna conflict. 
Et the person, the emotion, expression, yake, in a make it hard for you to be there. Hatred. And I want to deal with one. Jealous. Actually, hatred, jealous, malice, bitterness, Zotani brothers. They are brothers. Where you an anazinaza kidu tunaita witchcraft. Out of hatred, jealous, malice, bitterness equals to equals to witchcraft. To solve conflict, you must recognize and know how to manage your emotions. Maana conflict in a letter tension. In a letter tension. Now the tension and conflict in a letter as in Guinea near entitlement. Nia kutaka kuonesha who is in charge. Eh, kwa ndoa, unataka kuonesha who is in charge of this marriage. So because there is conflict, hakuna kuonge, kuongele shana, sinio? Because there is conflict in the group of eh, two people, they create a tension. Iyo group either ikwishe, ama moja wawa watoke, kuna mtu moja riambia ch- mwingine hapa kwa church, nitawacha umetoka hii church hey, and the person made it hard for this other person kiasi ya kwamba i was involved nikawaambia now do this they were sisters obviously ujo ukijua mtu akisema i will make it hard for you say in this church ujua wao ni sisters brother wako wengi na conflict mingi nikawaita kwa ofisi nikwambia bwana nyote 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 ni wadhamana kwangu nyote ni wadhamana kwangu siwezi sema wewe ni more important than this one nyote ni wadhamana kwangu nikawaambia mwenda mkunywe shai ah hiyo shai wali ule alinunua hiyo shai alikarangwa <laughs> and to make the matter worse wakati mmoja alitoka huyu mwingine naye akasema wow lakini yule aliambia huyu mwingine utatoka ndiye alitoka kwanza kisha huyu mwingine akatoka what am i saying when conflict are not resolved kutakuwa na tension Na ukweli ni ya kwamba hiyo tension iko. Hiyo tension iko. Na Mungu hataki maisha yako ikuwe ni maisha ya tension. You must know how to solve conflict. And in solving conflict, know how to recognize those negative emotions ambazo zinakuwa developed ama zinakuwa zinaingia wakati conflict iko. Know how to recognize them and know how to manage them. Know how to manage them. Don't run away because of the conflict. Hagar and Sarah, you see that in the book of Genesis chapter 16. There was conflict in between Hagar and Sarah. And Hagar alisikia ko entitled ya kwamba maana yeye anazaa atamdharau Sarah. Na Sarah kama mistreat. There was a conflict. And Hagar ran away. After running away, the angel of the Lord met with Hagar in the wilderness. That is in the book of Genesis chapter 16. The Bible says, uh, and verse 9, okay? The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. So while Hagar was thinking about quitting, running away, destroying the relationship, Without knowing where she was going. The angel of the Lord told her the issue about you is submission. What brought the conflict in between you and Sarah? It is the pride in you. It is the pride in you. If God tells a man, go and submit. Actually, when you read it well, utaone ya kwamba, siyo Sarah alianza kumistreat haga. Ni haga alianza kumudharao. Sarai. Baada ya kumudharao na walikuwa wanaonesha na who is better than who wewe hauwezi zaa mimi ni nazaa and that caused Sarah the bible say when Sarah went to Abraham Abraham akamwambia huyu mjakazi yako mikononi mwako fanya na yeye kile ambacho unataka and then Sarah anajua vile alifanya amen <laughs> wewe unajua vile alifanya si ndio unajua vile alifanya inaonekana wengine wetu hawajui lakini wa mama wa mama wanajua vile wangefanya eh? wakati una dinner house girl ambaye ana anaiba bwana yako haga hakuiba bwana alipewa na sara lakini baada ya kupewa ile madharao alimuonesha ilikuwa ni ya shida hmm? in verse 4 when he was in 
to Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistresses became despised in her nona. Who began the conflict? Who began the conflict? And how was the conflict birthed? Pride was the cause of the conflict. Can you remember I gave you some point? That pride in a give birth to conflict. When the angel told Haga, go and submit, get rid of pride. Get rid of pride. Go and submit. Na kuna kitu ambao ni humiliating. Baada ya wewe kuwashana na mtu na pride, mungu wana kuambia, rudi na unyanyeke. Wewe utarudi na mnagani yan. Na isitendeke. Mungu wana kuambia, rudi kwa uyo mtu unyanyeke. Sasa utarudi na mnagani. And I want to say this. The charisma and the gifting and the advantages we have in life can bath conflict among our life. Where you think those who do not have, ni kuomba hawaombi. Haga despised Sarah. Nan Sarah mistreated Haga. Haga ran away. It also it took the involvement of God for them to be reconciled. But out of that conflict, I want you to see, it escalated in between her. Yule mtoto ambaye Haga aliza, Akakuwa the greatest enemy wa watoto wa Abraham. Until today, wale watu ambao wametoka kwa Ishmael, ndiyo wanasumbua dunia mzima. So kama angekuwa nurtured na kuwe adapted na kuendelea bila conflict, hakunge kuwa na bitterness. Maana the issue was, Ishmael alianza kupiga Isaac. Genesis 21 inasema hivyo. Alianza kupiga Isaac. Alianza kusumbua Isaac. The conflict in between Sarah and Hagar haikukuwa resolved. Na baada ya hiyo Ishmael kuzaliwa, Isaac kuzaliwa, alikuta environment ya conflict. Na Mungu akamwambia sasa enda, mara ya pili alipoenda, akamwambia nitafanya huyu mtoto wako atoke mataifa kumi ndani yake. Na atakuwa mtu ambaye ni hostile kwa kila yeyote. So where do conflict come from? Where do quarrels come from? Lazima you know how to manage them. Now, for the time remaining, wacha tuangalie managing your anger in solving conflict. Managing your anger in solving conflict. Maana one of the key things that happens, conflict has a way of stirring your anger. Nyakila moja wetu hapa akwa na hasira. Uliza jirani yako, yako imefika wapi. Muliza yako ni ya gani, yako ni gani. Amen. <laughs> yako ni gani? <laughs> Kila mtu hapa hata mimi niko na yangu. Wewe uko na yako. Kila mtu hapa kwa na hasira yake. Mungu ali, Mungu si aliyakupatia hasira. Aa. Hata wanyama wako na hasira. Sasa vile wewe unafanya na yako ndio inategemea vile una solve conflict na vile unakaa na watu. Controlling your anger is an act of obedient to God. Is an act God cannot control your anger. Actually, you are supposed to control it. It's an emotional blessing ambao mungu aletupatia. How we need to express when we are not pleased. When we are upset. When things are not going the way we want them to go. Mungu hataki ukwea kwamba una hasira. Una anger. And that's why he says, in your anger do not sin. So why? Because also God has an anger. But the Bible says that, God is slow to anger. Ukikosea mungu January. Yeah? January. Ile anger yake, it's very slow. Yani kabra mungu wakasirike, kabra mungu wakasirike, is very slow. But you know what the Bible says? Be slow to anger. Kwa hivyo ni kukosea sahi. Sahi. Ama unikosea sahi. Slow to anger means, I should not act. In anger immediately. Do you know one of the key things that destroys relationship is anger? Is anger? I want to take you through some scriptures. The first thing that I have told you, controlling your anger is an act of obedience to God and his word. Narazima ujue, maana kuna yare mambo yanakuja kutriga anger. Yanatriga anger. Nambaka wakati utadil na hayo mambo. Mungu hata wachana na wewe. And God can use anyone to make sure ujue kwako wewe mwenyewe 
kama we uko na hasira na hasira yako imefika wapi hasira yako imefika wapi Mungu anaweza kuwa hana shida na yule ambaye analete hasira lakini wewe God is more concerned with you the other day uh, steam reporter sasa ilipopotea it was on a tuesday we didn't do a bible study we didn't do and uh, the cause was generator ilikuwa imeharibika na mimi sikuwa najua haya nikawa ni so serious tukaendelea friday ikatengenezwa ikakosa stima zikapotea tukiomba mimi nafikiria ilikuja haikukuja eh hey. sasa last tuesday i think it is last tuesday tukaingia tena kwa service stima ikapotea kama nahubiri na ilikuwa imetengenezwa akina KK wanajua mambo ya computer <laughs> ku fix computer lakini sio ku fix nini generate au sio mechanical a mechanics and uh, i told the people here god is training me to be patient because mimi sikui hivyo sikui hivyo yani nikaona kwa hii kitu yote si at ni set up i know them si set up nikashindwa the issue here generator inatoka wapi <laughs> nikaona shida sio generator shida mungu anataka kunifundisha hali ya kuwa patient and slow to anger so kama ni kitambo ni kutoka tu pale uh, nauliza john hello uh, uko wapi uh, ebu kuja kwa ofisi uh, okay sam uh, uko wapi uh, kuja kwa ofisi uh, uh, nani nani yomi mtu daita nani mwingine <laughs> Ian nafikiri uh, kile kuja uh, kuja kwa ofisi uko wapi uko wapi sasa hivi uh, niko town wewe fanya vile jue utafanya kuja sasa eh hey, watch okay sawa sawa tu nani haya <laughs> there is a time we came to Akesha na huri alipaswa kupeana pesa za Akesha tukunywe chai hakukua na hatukukunywa chai so nilitoka pale nje nikasema eh nani <laughs> Umerara uko wapi? Eh. Unarara na sisi tunaomba na unapaswa kuwa umepeana pesa ya tukunywe chai ya kesha. Eh? Unione kesho. <laughs> Mimi nichekereni tu. So I I knew God is communicating. Now you must understand when God is communicating to you through events, through situations and through people. You must know that. You must know when God is communicating something to you kwa barabara na makanga na ule mtu wa uba na hawa watu wote wanakuingia ingia namna hiyo God is communicating something to you Kuna siku waliniingia juzi nikasema wananiingia namna gani hata mimi nitawaingia kwenda kutoa hivi kichwa nikaona askari polisi nikasema Jesus Wacha ni wacha ni wapatie scriptures Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9 Don't be quick in spirit to be angry or vexed for anger and vexation lodge in a bosom in the bosom of fools why is he saying that anger do not be quick in spirit to be angry that means you have power to control that anger your emotional your kitu ya hasira you have power over it When the Bible said don't be quick in spirit to be angry. Kwa nini anasema anger inakaa katika roho ya watu wajinga. That means uh, when a man is angry they they think they reason in a foolish way because of the actions or the things they are going to do out of that anger. Anasema don't be quick in spirit to be angry. An anger can be transferred to you. Some of us the way we treat with the pe- our people is based on our upbringing. We learned from others. We learned from our parents. We learned from our elders. So the way you are behaving uh, is so much informed by what you saw na ikakuwa impacted into your spirit or into your soul so your subconscious mind wakati ambapo umekasirika 
you are not slow but you are quick to be angry you are quick to be angry proverb 12 verse 15 fools think their own way is right but the wise listen to others a fool is quick tempered but a wise person stays calm when insulted when insulted the nlt may be when insulted so there are insults ambazo zinaletwa kwako watu wana kuinsult it takes a man of wisdom to control the anger anasema a fool is quick tempered but a wise person stays calm when insulted na hii anger ime destroy relationship na imelete more complication wakati kuko na conflict maana we become quick tempered proverb 14 and verse 17 short tempered people do foolish things and schemers are hated kwa hivyo anasema quick tempered short tempered people anasema do foolish things anger has a way ya cause a man to do things in a foolish way maana ina affect your reasoning you don't see the outcome of your actions you are just you are just acting but what is pushing you to do that it is not god it is anger proverb 15 and verse 18 a hot tempered person stirs up conflict but the one who is patient comes a quarrel a hot tempered person na asa hii nataka tujue jinsi ya ku ya kudila na hii kuwa hot tempered nilisema kuna watu wana hasira ya haraka sana na ile hasira ya haraka ina manifest in many ways many ways i don't want to deal with the subject of anger lakini anasema a hot tempered person starts fight if you see somewhere kukwa na vita imeletwa na mtu hasira ya haraka hot hii kwanza anasema hot tempered proverb 19 and verse 11 sensible people control their temper so anger can be controlled sensible people control their anger they earn respect by overlooking wrongs so when a person is not sensible he cannot control his anger and he cannot overlook the wrongs he cannot sensible people we ought to be sensible people so anger according to that verse can be controlled but what does it take to control that anger and as some of the unrespect by overlooking wrongs proverb 29 and verse 11 a fool vent all his feelings but a wise man hold them back hold them back hold na hiyo ndiyo nataka ku ku wakati wa wote kuna kitu hata kama kuna conflict kuna shida ina happen if you are not thinking of reconciliation if you are not thinking of speaking the truth in love care confrontation afadhali unyamaze kuna wada wanasema kwa mawazo these are how tunafikiria alisema hivyo kwa nini ngoja tutaonana na yeye atajua mnaitwa maora kwa nini unaitwa hivyo atajua anaweza niambie unatoka hapa from town meditating on what you will say do you know the more you meditate the more you stir the anger the more anasema full vent their anger but wise people quietly hold it back how then can you quietly hold back the anger first of all is overlooking what that person has done overlooking and number two ni kuangalia is this thing revealed in my heart how wicked or how impatient i am kwanza unaangalia and number three unasema then what is the way out never hold or have a conversation with anyone when you're angry never mimi wani nakataa hata mtu akinikasirisha lazima kwanza niombe roho yangu kwanza nikimuita 
nitamwambia ile maneno nitamwambia na haitakuwa sio anga sio anga maana kama ningeangeresha huyo mtu na anga ange kuna mwingine tulimuita <laughs> that was i think 2016 2016 or 20 or was it 2016 ama 2017 sasa alikuwa ame, amefanya makosa na nilikuwa nimemwambia ni kama nimekasirika kitu akakuwa mgonjo maana mimi najua nikikasirika uh, ile kitu ndakwambia sitakutukana lakini ile authority nitatumia utafikiria ni, ni jemedari mkuu wa majeshi ya Kenya anaongea na <laughs> na itanga meeting that are so administrative that's an attack my position and my place as a pastor number one, to protect you from anything that can happen and also to show you that is not the right way to go sasa yikuwa mkutano mzuri sasa nikakuwa na ile ku review eh sasa akaniambia tafadhali pastor kama unaweza tumia maneno mengine nikamwambia actually hii ndio ile ya chini naweza tumia sasa hii nimenyenyekea akaniambia unaweza <laughs> nikamwambia uh, actually mimi sina hasira kama nilikuita ile siku ile wewe ungekuwa umekwisha what am i saying don't act and don't respond to issues when you are angry don't hata kama ni mzee akikukasirisha ukiona utamuuliza kwa ni wewe ni mwanaume kiasi gani wewe <laughs> yamasa hiyo maneno ufengeni mpatie shai mpigie pasi muweke hapo go against the feelings kama ni mimi nimekukasirisha go against the feelings kama ulikuwa unafikiria kunibariki na nimekukasirisha don't withhold the blessing wewe nipatie and then <laughs> wewe enda ukisema na na, na kipokea hiyo kitu <laughs> anafikiria vile ya komzu na anajua vile ameniumiza go against because actually anger blinds you spiritually write these scriptures Matthew now before we go to Matthew Psalms 37 verse 8 stop being angry turn from your anger or your rage do not lose your temper it only leads to harm stop being angry turn from your rage don't lose your temper it only leads to harm and there are many relationship we are destroyed that way because of anger and you may know when a person is acting from anger or when they are, they are acting from love to confront the issues they are confronting so anger it only leads to harm Anger can never solve issues. It can't. Neither can we be reconciled wakati kuko na, na anger. James 1:19 Inasema understand this my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger. Two things that are required, three things that are required in our life. Quick to listen, slow to speak slow to get angry now how then do you become slow to get angry how there are things that you must train your spirit you must train your soul you must train yourself and the training actually that god takes us through to become slow to get angry zina is a process na kukona many events in life ambazo zitaweza kukuwa zinakuonesha you are not slow to get angry actually when you achieve that in your life you can be able to handle every relationship and wherever you go slow what does it mean that slow to get angry remember the bible has told us hot tempered people the bible has told us control your anger how then do i get to this place where i am slow to get angry okay where how maana hata ita ita tutakutoka hapa itaanzia tu pale na unajua kila mtu wenyu anajuanga hasira yenu unajua watu wanafikiri pasa ajui hasi actually wale watu ni wanango wamenyamaza hivi 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 ati yule mtu ni mnyamazi sana ule <laughs> hapo ndipo hasira imekaa ukiona mtu ambaye saa zingine sio social sana si kwamba ni personality wengine sio personality ni issues za anger ni, ni anger 
Nyishu za nini? Anga. So how then do you achieve this? Kila mtu aseme ni jane, is a jane. <laughs> you begin from somewhere. Hallelujah. <laughs> from today as I finish. Be determined number 1. Not to respond to any issues. Ambazo zina stir up your anger the way you used to. That's number 1. Number 2, if it is possible, don't respond to any issue when you are angry. Is that after you have calmed your anger, you address the issue. Kama, na unajua Bible umetupatia limit ya anger. Imesema, let the sun not go when you are. For anger, according to that text, in a open a door for the entry, so that you get possessed. No. The devil can influence your thoughts to think in a certain way. Don't give the devil a loophole or a place in you. Kuna watu mimi na uwa. Na anga sema uyo. Amani muwe. Amani mutumia wezo wa mpige. Iyo ni mawa. If the pastor can think like that. Uyo mtu ni mimi ya mechazea hivo. Uyo mtu. Uyo mtu wa matatu ni mimi. Anajua mimi. Na ukisikia mtu wa kisema. Do you know who am I? Do you know? Iyo ni asira. Mwambio we ni mwanadamu. Wait, wait, wait. Cool down. When you are angry, this is the last scripture. Proverbs 15, verse 1. In a samanini, a Buddhism I want to go. A gentle, in a fanyanini, in a deflects anger. But, what? Where do harsh word comes from? From an angry heart. Kisikia mtu wakiongea kitu, kwanza usichukua hivu wamesema, juo yu mtu wamekasirika, wamekasirika. Na baada ya makasiriko yake kuenda chini, muite. Mwambia na juo huko unamanisha vile luko unasema, ni makasiriko. Sasa situonge sasa vizuri. Sasa hiyo ni, waingine wecho, awana hiyo, awana hiyo tone. Hiyo tone, awana hiyo tone. Tone yao ni kama ya watu, wanani? Nani wanakuwa na hile tone hash? Mazima tuto is a, is a harsh word. Maana words have power. Eh? Words has power. Lazima tulete maneno kama sabahani. Lazima tulete maneno kama gani? Sorry. Tafadhali. Na kuomba. Nilikuwa na onelea. Eh? <laughs> Do you know hii nini inyaze katuma in, 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 mtu watuwa kechachi hii? Hi. Ati pasta Hivo unate zanga na mna hii, haini pende zangi. Aa, hii tu. Sio mitu mingi. Mkujo uniambie. Bwana sifuye mtu gati. Your approach determine how that relationship will go. Your approach. Approach. Kucheza, mimi ni naji enjoy. Nacheza, nasikia mzuri. Lakini na kuiritate. Sasa bila utakavyo niambio ndia itaditama ni kama ni tanunua mbili. Ni kue ni kivanya hivi. Hey, na ujue, <laughs> hii ni nyumba ya mungu. Huku siyo kwako. <laughs> Sasa mini yeza nga kuambia, ujue hii ni nyumba ya mungu and the Bible says, let everything that I have brought praise the Lord. I'm not a dead person. Yeah. I'm praising my God. Ama ni kuambie, samahani. Unge pendelea, Ni fanye vipi. Vyo ni ambie. Can you, unewezo uka chezea mungu bila icho kinumbi. Ni kinumbi ya manini. Havu nukuambie haiweze kani itafadhali. Kama inge yeweze kana. Ni kuambie basi kanga kule nyuma. Ili mimi na mimi ni express vile na vyo paso. But niweza nakakawa. Unezo kanambie wewe unatusumbua. Iyo kitu yako napiga kerere, atuweze fikiria vile tunaimba, ni iyo jingling jingling yako. Eh? Ni wache, wache, kwanza wachane na yo. Na mini kuambia hii ni nyumba ya mungu, sita mtafanya nitakavyo. Kwa hivyo kama ukona shida enenda, si kuenenda ama ni kuenda zako. We have lost you, you have offended me. Tumewachia hapa. Gentle answers are very key. So, nime kupatia point mbili za mwisho. Nime, umeandika nini? When you are? How then do you achieve? How do you come to a place where you are slow to anger? Slow. Man hapo ndiyo nataka sisi sota tufike. Hapo. Slow to anger. It's a journey. It's a process. 
is a journey. Solo. Kutoka saa hii anza najua Jemima is teaching me how I was a bit uh, mimi ni mtu wa time. Okay? Mtu wa time. Hata my wife nimemfundisha timing, time. Mimi nikisema tunafika mahali saa mbili, saa mbili. Hivo. Sasa hiyo ni refix kwa mama yake. Hiyo ni refix. Hiyo iko sorted. Lakini kwa Jemima, <laughs> Asubuhi na muitanga 30 minutes before. I know she is a she is a girl. Sasa mimi namaliza mambo yangu yote. Hapo sasa ninakaa hapo kama leo asubuhi. Tulimaliza kila kitu. Saa moja natakanga saa moja na 20 tumetoka. Ye yeah, bado saa moja na nusu bado anakimbia kimbia namna hii. Ninaenda kwa gari na gurumisha. Sasa kama ni kitambo unajua ningefanya nini? Ningefanya? Si kuna watu nimewacha hapa. Ati tunaenda mahali na wewe saa mahali. Ati na unachelewa tu unakuja namna hii. Ninipigia simu na kuambia niko kidhurai. Sasa nikaona ili ninacha hiyo kitu ndani yake ya ku keep time. Lazima nikuwe very gentle lazima ni kuwe very patient na lazima nielewe yeye ni dada sasa niko na wadada bawi moja nilishinda maana na tuna stuanga yeye nitakuacha <laughs> baka mama anasemanga leo na password jipigie bakovi eh hey, kwa nini ati ni wewe ninaongojea <laughs> sasa hiyo hasa imekuwa every day asubuhi na kuja hapa late morning devotion na kujanga mapema sasa nafika 6020 6:30 na nilijitayarisha sasa ni kuongojea tu nikasema Mungu hii safari <laughs> imekuwa ndefu sana <laughs> lakini lazima unanifundisha how to be slow to anger how to be patient and how to accommodate another one ili twende safari moja sema amina do you have a, such a person in your life? Now, Mungu anakufundisha kitu. Uliza jirani yako, wewe uko na kama huyo ama tukutumie. Amen. Kila mtu wako na yeye, kila mtu wako na yeye. And uh, the Lord will help you. Amen. So we will only do this series is to confess some of the sins we have done or committed in anger. The Bible say in your anger do not sin. Some of the sins. Number 2 is to ask God to help us and to give us the wisdom on how to be patient and to be slow to anger. And number three, if there is anything about you are struggling in concerning solving a conflict because of anger, tell God to help you to overcome that grudge, okay, grudge in our lives. Can we bow down your heads?